Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilith Huting, and this is the GMK Nook Box, which is a tiny little desktop computer, measures about 2.4 by 2.4 by 1.7 inches, has an Intel Celeron quad-core Gemini Lake refresh processor. And I've uh, shot a couple of other videos showing this running Ubuntu and Windows and using it as a sort of general purpose desktop PC. And somebody rightly, rightfully asked, um, hey, what about using LibreLike, a lightweight Linux distribution that is really just designed for media center use? It's a little $200 computer, should theoretically be able to handle 4K video. Let's see if it can. So I uh, decided to give that a try. LibreLeck is installed on this USB flash drive. It's just an eight gigabyte drive there. And that allowed me to install it without overwriting Windows and Ubuntu still running off the built-in storage. And so now I can stream content, I can play content from built-in storage. I can stream content from the internet or from a shared network drive. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on a TV and zoom out a little bit so that you can see most of that TV. And now I'm gonna go ahead and press the power button to turn on, and it should boot pretty quickly. Um, whether I'm running from local storage or from uh, the external drive here, it's pretty fast to, to boot most operating systems. Um, and I'm just gonna save a few seconds by telling it to type run, and you'll see that we'll, uh, we'll load up this Linux distribution in no time. So LibreLife, just enough for Kodi. This is version 9.2.6 and it boots straight into Kodi 18.9 Leo. And you can see we've got, um, I've linked it to a, a network drive. It's already got access to some content, but what I'm gonna do is just a quick 4K video test. And to do that, we're gonna come down to videos, files, and this is going to be streaming over a local wireless network, 802.11ac. We've got a 4K, H.264 video at 120 Mbps first. And I think that looks pretty good. So that's not a problem. Uh, 1080p per video is no problem at all either. So let's up it to 200 Mbps. Again, looks pretty good. Streaming over a wireless network. H.264, 250 Mbps over a wireless network. And now let's push things a little bit by going to not only 300 Mbps, but now we're switching to HEVC 10-bit encoding. And here you start to see a little bit of jitteriness. which I suspect is gonna continue when we try 400 Mbps. Yeah, stutters even a little bit more. I've seen it play a little bit smoother than this in the past, so I think some things might depend a little bit on uh, other factors. But that's all streaming over local network. You don't have to stream over a local network. You can also play from local media. So here is video installed on the, or downloaded to the internal SSD. This is the HEVC 10-bit encoded uh, file running at 300 Mbps, and now I think it actually looks okay. Getting a few scan lines in there. I'm not sure if that just has to do with um, the HDMI connection or something else. But let's try the 400 Mbps version. And now I think we might be dropping a few frames here and there. It looks a little bit more jittery, but it's a lot smoother than what we were getting previously. And on previous tries, I've actually had no problem. I think some parts of this might sort of depend on how warm the computer is or other factors that I'm uh, not sure about. Uh, again, 1080p video streaming, I haven't had any problems with. Uh, 4K video from YouTube, I have had problems with when running Ubuntu or Windows. Um, but local playback of 4K video seems to work just fine with LibreLeck. Uh, I don't have this configured to run to link to YouTube because that's kind of a hassle to get through, but this is just a quick test to show what 4K video uh, playback looks like under a couple of different situations and different bit rates. Um, I've also installed some plugins so I can stream tiny desk concerts from NPR Music and other things, and it works reasonably well. Um, now I should mention this little computer 
you know, one of the advantages of having something so small and relatively inexpensive is that you can just plug it into your TV and use it in places where you might not normally want to put a full-fledged computer, and, uh, and it'll do that. But it is not completely silent. Uh, it does have a little fan to help it from keep it from overheating, and that fan can make a little bit of noise under heavy load. It also um, does get rather warm to the touch, so under extended use, you might run into some heat issues depending on what it is you're doing, if you're trying to use it for games or other more intensive tasks. But uh, I don't think you'd have a lot of trouble using it for 1080p video, and under some circumstances, even higher resolution or high bitrate video does seem to work reasonably well. So that is a quick look at the GMK Nook Box running LibreLuck uh, with Kodi, and show you that in addition to starting up really quickly, shuts down really quickly as well if you want to uh, completely shut down between uses. And that's it. It's turned off. Um, I can switch operating systems at startup by going into the UEFI or BIOS settings, or I can just unplug that flash drive. And uh, since I do have Ubuntu and Windows still installed to local storage, I can go ahead and choose to boot into that instead. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and the GMK Nookbox, just showing you another use case for this little PC. And one that I think a lot of people might be interested in, which is uh, can I use it as a media center by plugging it into a TV? It's a little bit pricier than something like a Roku or a, a Amazon Fire TV or even an Apple TV device, but it is pretty versatile, um, allowing you to use something like LibreLuck with Kodi, or uh, you can use full-fledged desktop operating software like Windows or Ubuntu.